Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, as part of the iOS hacking and security research playlist on this channel, we're gonna be taking a look at another exploit development challenge. And this one involves a more advanced exploit mitigation known as ASLR, which a lot of you guys may have already heard of. So we're gonna be looking at how this can be bypassed and allow you to exploit a program with ASLR enabled. So first of all, if you haven't already looked at the rest of the playlist on this channel or know nothing about exploit development, then I recommend you go and check it out so that you actually understand the fundamentals of how this all works. And once you've done that, you're ready to come back and watch this video. So the binary we're going to exploit in this video is called ROP Level 4, and you can download it from my GitHub page on the exploit exercises or the exploit challenges repo. Um, and you can see ROP Level 4 added 18 hours ago, so it's the latest level in this series. And you want to download this, move it over to your iPhone. This is specific to iOS once again, although the uh, underlying concepts will actually apply to anything. But these are compiled for ARM v7 devices, so download it onto your device, uh, preferably an ARM v7 device, but you can actually run it on 64 bit as well. Um, so once you've got the binary downloaded onto your device, we want to either go inside of mobile terminal on the device itself, which obviously makes it a bit hard for you guys to see, so I won't be doing that, or you can use the Mac terminal and SSH into the device. So we're going to do that for this video, and we're just going to uh, SSH in with the IP address, default password is Alpine. And we're in. So you want to go to the directory where you have ROP level 4 downloaded to. Uh, and you can see I've got mine right here. And we can run ROP level 4 by doing dot slash ROP level 4. And you can see here it goes. So first of all, we get a little address at the top. This is an info leak, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. Then we get a welcome banner, just saying welcome to ROP level 4 by me. And then we have a little prompt to enter our name, and you can just enter something in here, and it will just say welcome and then it will exit the program. So it's very simple. It's a vulnerable to a stack buff overflow vulnerability again, just like the others, very simple. But this one's a lot harder to exploit than the others because we do have ASLR enabled. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, ASLR stands for Address Space Layout Randomization. And it's an exploit mitigation that is used to randomize the process address space of a program while it's running. And it's designed to basically make it impossible for an attacker to know where anything is uh, in the program during its runtime. So this is used to basically make uh, control of the program counter or EIP useless. So even if you do a stack buffer overflow and you take control of the program, you can't really do anything because you don't know where anything is in the code. So you can't jump to shell code or you can't jump to an address because all the addresses constantly change. So it is actually bypassable, obviously, as we're making this video. And there's two main methods. The first one is a brute force, which basically where you keep repeating, um, you, use, you pick one address to use and you keep running the program over and over again until it happens to land at this address and you basically get lucky. Uh, although this is not very reliable obviously because depending on the range of randomization, this could take uh, up to weeks to actually successfully bypass. Uh, the more reliable way and the way we're gonna be using this video is known as an info leak. So the way an info leak works is basically where you leak an address of something, doesn't really matter what, anything in the program, you leak the address during the running of the program and then you can basically, with this address, you can calculate um, the difference between the address right now and the address of the stack binary. And this gives you basically the ASLR offset or the ASLR slide, which you can then add to anything else and everything basically becomes relative to it. So leaking one address defeats ASLR completely because you can just add the same difference to everything else and know where everything is. So that's what this program is designed to do. You can see it actually gives us an info leak at the top. The first thing it prints out, that little address is an info leak. Normally, in a real world situation, obviously it wouldn't give you this. You'd have to have a separate vulnerability that gives you an info leak, something such as a format string vulnerability or something more advanced. And with this address, we can obviously bypass ASLR. So our job is to write a program that uses this address to calculate the ASLR offset and then exploit it. So first of all, we'll just quickly prove that it is um, vulnerable to the same uh, overflow as all the others were. So just enter a long string of A's and yet you can actually see that the address did just change the second time I run the program proving that ASLR is enabled so it randomizes every time you run it uh, anyway so we enter this large string of A's and you can see we get segmentation for because it crashed and if we run that with GDB we can see the offset quickly so run and we'll do again a huge string of A's actually we'll need to do a patent input for this one and we enter that, and you can see we get uh, the crashed at 4747. So 47 is, if we count along, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, G. So up to the Gs is our offsets. Everything before that is our junk character. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then make sure, as I said, you watch the previous video so you understand 
the basics of stack buffer overflows. So we know our offset, but obviously whatever we put into the G's, we don't know what we want to put there yet because the address will change each time. So to do this, we need to actually have a separate program that's going to exploit the binary for us. We can't manually do this one. Like with the others where you enter a simple string uh, that you craft yourself, you cannot do this with this binary really because we need the program to calculate it for us and work out all the differences and everything like that. So first of all, we're going to look at a couple of addresses uh, in the in IDA Pro. So we're going to open up IDA Pro, open it with Rock Level 4. You don't have to use IDA Pro, you can use anything. You can use GDB, you can use Radar 2, you can use Hopper, anything will work, any disassembler. And we want to go to, we're going to have a look through these functions. So you can see we're on start at the moment. Uh, we can see a function called leak address, which is the one that actually leaks the address for us. Now if we look at this function, you can see as well as printing an address, it actually writes the address to a file, which is going to make things a lot easier as well. And if we in the directory here, we quickly, if we ls, you can see we have this file leak.txt. And if we open that, you can see that it contains the last address of the, the randomization basically. So it leaks, as well as printing it to the screen, it leaks it to a file, which will help us to write this exploit a lot easier. So we're going to keep that in mind. And um, we're going to look through more. So this is the leak fu uh, function. We don't really need to look at that anymore. But we can see the secret address, secret function. This is where we want to basically jump to. This is going to be our end goal. And as I said, without ASLR enabled, this would be very easy. You just simply note down the address of it, jump there, and it's done. With this, it's going to be randomized each time. But this is where we want to go to. So we do actually need to note down the address of secret the static address. Even though it's not going to be at this address, we still need to know what this address is. So at the bottom, you can see these addresses, it's a BD28, so we're going to text edit, we're going to open a little text edit to note down a few addresses, so let's just open a new document, and we'll just do secret equals, let's just mix with figure, uh, so secret equals 0xBD28. So that's the stack address of secret. Now the actual address that gets leaked for us, the, the info leak here, this address is for a string. A string is not really ever used, it's just there for the purpose of an info leak, but uh, if we look for that. So admittedly I don't actually know how to use it very well, I've only used it a couple of days, so I can't find the string section in there, but I just used uh, hopper, which is an alternative. Go to the string section, find the string, and note down the address, which is C03C. So this will obviously be important, so we need to compare it to the one that we get leaked for us. So once you've got both of these addresses noted down, you're ready to go ahead and actually write the exploit. So we're just going to open up a plain new C program. You can do this in Xcode or anything else. And the first thing we're going to do is create two int variables to store both of these addresses. So the first one will be called fix leak, and we'll just have that address as a string. And the second one will be the secret address. And uh, these are just so that we can refer to them later on in our exploit. Next, we need um, a char array to store the final payload, which is called this exploit. And we also need a char array to store the junk characters or the padding. And this will just be equal to the junk amount of characters, which is up to G in the alphabet, as we already figured out. Uh, so after that, we can actually get on and start with the exploit. Now, to be able to talk to ROP level 4 and read from it and stuff like that, we need to set up a pipe. Now, here's the code for a pipe. I won't go into depth completely on it because it makes the video too long. Thanks to at Live Overflow, uh, he has a sec he has a YouTube channel about hacking as well. He helped me get some of this stuff sorted out. So go ahead and subscribe to him, and uh, look this up online if you don't understand how this works right now. But this basically just runs ROP level four and allows us to talk to it. So I'm going to start adding a couple of little prompts to allow us to see what's going on. So you can see, uh, if we just do a printf there, reading leaked address. And underneath that, we're just going to sleep for two seconds, just so that the leaked address definitely gets written to the file. And then we're going to actually read from that file. So if you remember, it's called leak.txt. So we're going to open leak.txt for reading uh, using f open, and then we're going to use f gets to actually read all the data from that file into a new char array named read data. So this basically gives us a variable with the leaked address. So we actually have the leaked address. And just make sure you close that file. Now we actually need to be able to do calculations with this address. So we need it to be in the form of an integer. So create a new int called address and convert the uh, read data string into an int and this will basically allow us so we can actually modify um, other ints and do calculations with it so we can just print f again you can add a few little prompts throughout just so the exploit looks a bit more user friendly you can see leaked address is and then we can substitute in the hex value for the leaked address that we've just found now we need the actual offset so we want to take away we're going to create one called aslot offset 
We want to take the address um, away. No, we want to take the fixed leak away from the address. This will give us the difference between the two. And this is the ASLR offset or the ASLR slide, which will allow us to calculate everything else. And we can also add a little prompt to print that out to the user. And after that, we're just going to calculate the real secret address. So we want to do secret address equals secret address plus that new offset, which means basically we've calculated the real address of it. And again, we can print that out. Or we can say craft in exploit payload because we basically have the address we need now. We know the real address of secret. Now what we need to do is actually split up this address into bytes so that we can actually enter it into the string in reverse order. So if you haven't seen the other videos, and as I said, recommend you do, but you'll notice that you need to enter them in reverse order because of the little endian platform. So to do this, we're going to split it up using this code right here into each byte. And then we're going to basically create a new string. We're going to use the padding and as well as each byte, obviously, and put them into the exploit uh, string, the final payload exploit. So we can use sprintf for that. As you can see there, it's going into exploit. And here will be our format. We want the string followed by three chars or characters because we need them to be the character equivalent of these hex numbers and you can see there we just add all those in and finally we can print out that the payload's been crafted and that we're going to execute the payload onto the um, program and of course we want to close um, our file descriptor here and finally we want to write it into the uh, right end of the, of the pipe so into FD1 exploit and obviously as many bytes as you want because you want to overflow it and that is pretty much it so it should work it should be a pretty reliable exploit and all you need to do now is actually compile this exploit and then you can use it to actually exploit this program all right so once you've built your exploit just move the code over into a C file on your device itself and then you can use uh, this command clang exploit.c specify your obviously SDK dash o exploit run that and it will compile your exploit into executable you can sign that with LDID and then run the exploit so you can see we get the program sort of running because obviously we're telling it to run and uh, sometimes you will get basically nothing happening um, I'm just gonna try again something to do with the way I've added the characters to the um, the string the exploit final payload because I believe it only actually interprets them if they have an ASCII character associated with them so if you get a randomization that has an address that actually the hex number doesn't code for any ASCII character, then it's going to fail. But most of the time it will actually work. So you can see it did work there. You get um, our little prompts. They don't actually come through one at a time. You just get them all at once. But it does work. You can see what's happening. You get ASLR offset that we've calculated. And it all goes through, crafts a payload, and sends the payload to the program. And then you get the you shouldn't be here function, which should actually execute some shell commands as well. And the, the more times you try it, um, sometimes you'll get the shell commands executing as well. I'm not sure why it doesn't sometimes. Again, could be something to do with the characters I've entered, but I'll just run it a couple more times to see if it does work. But you can see it's quite a reliable exploit, definitely more reliable than brute forcing. There you go. So you can see this is what was meant to happen. You get the, uh, the uname-a command run as well as ls on slash. So just something not very useful, but that's what the secret function does. So basically, um, complete this challenge. So hopefully you guys understood this video. I know I sort of went through the actual code of the exploit a bit quick but I don't want to make this video too long so if you have any questions then talk to me on Twitter or leave a comment and I will try to help with anything like that but that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.